What's up, guys? Welcome back to today's episode of the Sports Sermon. We are brought to you by Scooch, the most functional phone case on the market. Check out scoochcase.com to get yours today and use the code SPORTS18, sports with a Z, of course, to get a 10% discount on your order. Stay tuned till the end for a special Scooch giveaway as well. But now, today's episode. Hello and welcome inside the Sports Sermon. I am Dylan Staggy here today with Jason Gandhi and Dan Majors. And as you can tell by the title, we are talking about fantasy running backs today. So we're going to talk about some specific running backs uh, just to start off and then maybe a little bit of draft strategy at the end. Uh, but my first question to you, Jason and Dan, um, can Alvin Kamara match or exceed his rookie numbers? And how much of a boost does Mark Ingram's four-game suspension give his stock? Yeah, good question, Dylan. I don't think he can because there were many outliers in his game last year. It was 6.1 yards per carry and 10.2 yards per catch last year, and those are incredibly unsustainable. I don't see him sustaining that production, but I do think he will have a good season. With Ingram out, I expect his carries to go up to like 15-ish per game. I mean, Sean Payton said they weren't going to ramp up his carries when he's gone, and it's only four games. And then I think that seven and a half carries per game that he had around last year will be about the same, maybe eight to nine. But I really don't think he's going to have as good of a season. I think he'll still be good. But I think where he's getting drafted right now as that seven to nine spot, I think that's his ceiling. I don't see him being any better. And I think his peak fantasy hype right now is right. Is, his peak fantasy hype is right now. And I think he won't sustain what he did last year. Well, yeah, Kamara was a stud last year. And I don't see a reason to not expect the same. I mean... As for Ingram's suspension, though, he's out for a month, so I expect one or two 100-yard games from Kamara during that time. Also, if he totally balls out, then he could just run away with the job and leave Ingram behind. Um, so because of that, I would put him in my top eight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's going to have the opportunity uh, with that suspension to be that number one running back. And I think even without the sp- suspension and when Mark Ingram comes back, I think Kamara will still get a little bit more touches uh, than Mark Ingram. His efficiency is definitely going to go down, though, like Jason mentioned. His numbers were just off the charts last season in terms of his yards per carry, yards per catch. But his volume should go up to counteract it. So, But see, my, you guys both say like, he should be able to. Like, I don't understand how he would be – like, how does he do better than the seventh overall spot in fantasy? Like, that has got to – like, Le'Veon no, Bell, like, like Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley, David Johnson, Zeke could all be the number one running back. No one would be surprised with that. But, like, I don't think Alvin Kamara gets any better than – what he had now. That's what, like, for me, I don't want to draft Alvin Kamara. Like, I do not want him because he can only be lower than I'm drafting that. There's no way I'm getting a steal on Calvin Kamara. Yeah, I mean, it's not... Do you guys agree? It's not, like, he doesn't have super high potential because of Mark Ingram behind him, but his efficiency, and his efficiency will go down, but he will also have more opportunities, I think, this season. I mean, I, I don't think so. I think the Saints are going to stick with what they what they what what worked for them. And, like, for me, this is a fantasy perspective, not as much as, like, the Saints' perspective. From a fantasy perspective, if I'm looking at Alvin Kamara, I don't want to draft at face value unless I'm drafting Le'Veon Bell. I mean, that's number one pick. Like, obviously, you're going to draft at face value. I want to try and get steals. That's the whole point of fantasy. Like, if you draft at face value the whole time, you're probably not going to win your league. You have to find steals. And so, for me, Alvin Kamara is a guy I don't feel comfortable because I don't see any way he's a steal. I think he's at best face value, and I don't want to pay face value for my guys. I mean, if you're... Drafting at the seventh spot, though, for Alvin Kamara. Yeah, like, if, I'm, if I had the seventh pick, you're asking like, who I would take? Well, I mean, that and, like, it's not, you can't go that much higher anyway. Like, I mean, drafting, I think the seventh best, DeAndre, drafting the seventh best fantasy football player at the number seven pick, that's really good. But that's his ceiling. Like, that's the best case scenario you see the seventh best player. Oh, I don't even see that. Exactly, I don't either. That's what I'm saying. That's the best case is he hits that and is a seven. For me, if I'm picking number seven, he's, is that his ADP? Is it seven? Is that why you're using number seven? Um, I think so. Okay, something around we'll roll with that either way. So say his ADP is seven. I knew it was either seven or nine. I just didn't remember. Something around We'll roll with seven. That's fine. So if I'm drafting at seven, you expect, well, I'm assuming in this scenario, we're taking that the top five running backs are gone. Zeke, DJ, Gurley, or four. And yeah, Barkley and Bell. Those guys are gone. So he's yeah, the best I mean, running back. Barkley could be there. Barkley could be But we're going to say Kamara is the best running back. Sure. Okay. From there, this is what I'm saying. He, like I said, ceiling is seven. If I look at a guy like Julio Jones and DeAndre Hopkins, I think both of those guys should be the number one fantasy receiver. I think they could outdo Antonio Brown. That's a steal for me. Because Antonio Brown's not going to be there. So I think 
for me, I'm looking for steals. Like I've mentioned multiple times, that's a steal. If I get the number one receiver at the seventh pick, steal. Yeah. Even if I get the number two receiver, I think that's a steal at number seven. Instead of RB, I mean, I think Kamara could be out RB 10, yeah. 9. I could. I have Kareem Hunt over him right now. Yeah. And I think I, I think Melvin Gore could be over him. I have Dalvin Cook. I think Leonard Fournette, maybe that one's more of a stretch. You have Dalvin Cook in front of him? Uh, no, I'm saying those guys could. Okay. Like, this is all ceiling. I mean, Melvin, my rankings right now, I mean, we'll get into that. I, we're going to get that later, but it's fine. I can put this. I have Alvin Kamara as my seventh running back. Oh, I have an eight. Yeah, exactly. And so, if that's your ceiling, I'm going to go get the number one receiver. I think I, I, there are two guys that I legitimately are comfortable with as a number one fantasy receiver. I think all of us agree there's no way Alvin Kamara is number one fantasy receiver. Or fantasy running back. Eh. In a PPR league, I think. We're not could. talking about PPR. That's just standard. I mean, PPR is like honestly becoming the new standard, but I think no, it's there's no, a it's lot just of people. ESPN. No, I mean that's everywhere. No, it's not. If you're on NFL one, or Yahoo, it is PPR. both standard is normal. Like it's only ESPN that's changed that. But what then? I've been in one total PPR league ever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that I don't see any. I don't. I think we all agree. There's no way Alvin Kamara is number one running back. You have yeah, to no. outdo what he did last year. Like he wasn't number one last year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he could. He, he's definitely going to get more touches. Why is that? Because Mark Ingram's out the so four first games four weeks. Are gonna change his I mean, I could see where he's coming from there with, like... Like, Mark Ingram's not going to fall out of the rotation. When Dane, you said that, I was like, there's no way there's not going to play Mark Ingram. Oh, no, they're definitely going to yeah, play him. Yeah, like, he's going to like get his be, 10 carries. Like, 10, if Ingram would have started at the start of the year, though... Like, not, not started the yeah. game, but, like, I mean, like would have played yeah. to start of the year, I think that hurt him with the suspension. Because later, now they feel like, oh, okay, Kamara, he's our running back now. Why not play him more than Ingram. Yeah, I mean, but Sean Payton said this. And he said, we're not going to ramp up Kamara's 15 touches more because Ingram's out. He had seven and a half. If he gets seven and a half carry, 15 puts him at 22. There's no way he's averaging 22 carries a game. I put, like I said, I think he's at 15 max. 15 carries a game is very good. He's not going to get that one out Mark Ingram comes back. to go back to eight, nine, ten max. I think ten's max with Mark, Mark Ingram playing. So, sorry. With that being said, a 10... Hand off. A 10 carry guy is not going to be the fantasy number one running back. Heck, a 15 carry guy is not going to be number one fantasy running back, and 15 is high. And that's if Mark Ingram doesn't play and all everything goes right. I think 15 carries. So that's why, like, don't I just? I mean, I, I just want to like, what's the blueprint for Alvin Kamara being number one running back? That isn't you think it's possible? I mean, there's definitely room for both of them in the backfield, as we saw from most of the season last year. And I think Kamara's going to get more touches because I think he's a better running back. But you're saying like. There's a chance he could be the number one. Like you're saying, back. better than Todd Gurley, better than Le'Veon Bell, better than Zeke Elliott, who all are the number one guys with no number two behind him. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance for everything to happen. I, I, I don't. Th- okay. I mean, there's no. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it's a high percentage, but like, if there's a chance for that, then Oregon State can win the college football. Heck yeah, they can. Shout out Oregon State. <laughs> I mean, in fantasy, there's a lot better chance that he's going to than something. I like don't that. know about that. I just. You look at guys like Le'Veon Bell and Todd Gurley. There's studs. You look Ezekiel at Ezekiel Elliott. Stud. You look at the consensus top ten running backs, top twelve running backs. We'll say top twelve. Dan, I see your book is twelve. I'm, we'll use that number. Top twelve running backs. Alvin Kamara is the only guy with a formidable backup, and those are the only guys that are true. The Kareem Hunt. Who's that backup? Um, Spencer Ware. Okay, Mark Ingram and Spencer Ware are not equal. Okay, well, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Like, 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 like they still share. Characters. Okay, yeah, but like Hunt could still get 20. No one's surprised. If any of the same running backs got 20 carries, you'd be like, "What the heck?" Like, that's why for me when I look at the like, I mean, the fact of the matter is, a workhorse running back is scarce in this league. You do not see it more than these guys that are at the top of the running back rankings for a reason. Le'Veon Bell, Zeke, Todd Gurley, David Johnson, Saquon Barkley. Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette, Melvin Gordon, Dalvin Cook, and then LaShawn McCoy. Maybe Jordan Howard in there also, but they have even Tariq Cohen. So I wouldn't say he is. Besides that, a workhorse running back is not common for the NFL. And so for me, if like I said, if I'm grabbing number seven, I would even get a guy like Kareem Hunt before I take Alvin Kamara because I want a guy that's going to be the number. If there's a workhorse back available, take him. Alvin Kamara is not a workhorse back. Yeah, you look at... Um, Kamara's stats from last year, he only had 120 carries. Exactly. And that was, yeah. He played all 16, had 120 carries. Yeah. He's not going to get a bunch of carries. Yeah, but he caught the ball a lot, too. I mean, you have the fact yeah, that... But that's a fluke. That's the point. You can't sustain touchdown. Like, that, I mean, that's just normal. Like, you look at stats, like, touchdowns, when he has that many, is going to go down 
like the same reason with Julio Jones, which we talked about in the wide receiver outline, like that's a fluke season, and you have to like mathematically they will go up. I mean, Le'Veon had like basically triple the amount of carries he had and had four more receptions. Yeah, exactly. And played fifteen games. That's, that's why I, I think we're not we're not even hanging on Alvin Kamara. Like no, I still take I him. Just, there. He's not. He yeah. is a first round talent. Don't like don't take him. But like he's a first round pick. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is is. There's no way he can be the number one. If I'm yeah. drafting, I want a guy that I think could be the number one guy in fantasy football. Alvin Kamara, for me, has no chance of being that. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, if you think that, sure. Um, let's move on to the rookie running back class, though. Uh, is there anybody in this rookie class that can be this year's Alvin Kamara? I don't think there is one. If I have to pick a rookie running back that could win you fantasy leagues, the most obvious is Saquon Barkley. He is the most talented in NFL ready. The G men revamped their offensive line for him. I expect twelve hundred yards or more for this season for him. Yeah, I'm in love with Saquon Barkley. It's no question that he'll be the best out of this class. Um, he's a once in a generation talent and should be a top five fantasy back this year. Yeah, I mean Saquon Barkley is the obvious one. I have another one though, uh, Rashad Penny. I think his ability to do everything out of the backfield gives him the kind of versatility that Kamara did a season ago. Uh, as of now, Chris Carson is still a starter, but uh, I mean, the Seahawks drafted Rashad Penny uh, in the first round for a reason, and unfortunately, though, uh, Rashad Penny is a fourth to sixth round pick right now instead of a deep flyer like Kamara was last year. Another guy to watch out for, I think, is Royce Freeman. Similar situation, kind of. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to have a Kamara type season, why I didn't mention him, because I don't think he's going to have that kind of production. You know, the guys that eventually that I maybe could draft would be Geis, Penny, Michelle, Chubb, and Ronald Jones. Yeah, I mean... the guy on that list that I would take, but I don't want to spoil it. I'll save that later. All right. Let's stay on the rookie running backs. Uh, Besides Saquon Barkley, who do you think is the most interesting rookie running back? I went between two. The one guy that that Dan left out that I want to mention is Carrion Johnson. That dude could have a heck of a season. I think he is my third favorite rookie running back in fantasy from where they're getting drafted and everything. But most interesting, there's one guy. And I think we all have to have this guy. Sonny Michel. He is the most surprising and the one to keep your eye on. The Patriots have got so much production for having to spend so little on the running back position. And I was shocked to see the Patriots draft him in the first round. You don't draft a first round running back to rotate him in and randomly throughout the season I see him filling Deion Lewis's role with more handoff responsibilities. This situation is fascinating to me. Yeah. You've got Mike Gillisley, you've got uh, Brandon Bolden, James White, him. You don't dra- like. Why do they draft him? I was shocked, but they love him. And so if they love him, keep an eye out on him. But also the Patriots, they don't like using workhorse backs. They don't work. So I'm so fascinated. I cannot wait for next Thursday to at least just see preseason. What is he the number one guy? Is he number one on the depth chart? I want to see that at least. Much less how many carries. What's he, what do we look like? What do we, can we expect from his workload? I think there's a lot to look at for Sonny Michelle. Yeah, another guy that I think is very interesting is Darius Geis. He might be the biggest boomer bust in the draft. He could split time with Chris Thompson, but Geis should get most of the carries as Thompson is he's basically a pass-catching back. Um, the two rookies that I'll take in front of Geis are Barkley and Rashad Penny. Uh, I like Penny based on the fact that he was underrated in college and the draft. And, I mean, the guy behind Underrated him, in the draft. He was a first-round pick. I think he means fancy drafts. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought I thought you were and, uh, draft. and uh, Chris Carson is the one who is who's battling. I mean, yeah, I think seventh round pick. Yeah, didn't really do that much last year. I also said guys though. Um, Alex Smith is an all star handing the ball off, uh, and the Redskins uh, should not be motivated to throw the ball a lot because I think their cast of receivers is going to be a little bit underwhelming this season. So I like guys to get a lot of carries for the Redskins. Um. um yeah, I, I have two comments. Um, first, my comment is, Dan, Gary, you guys have a question. What's his bust? Like, well, I, I don't see him busting, so I'm curious. You think because Chris Thompson just overtakes that? Yes, and, I mean, rookie running backs haven't been – actually, yeah, they have, never mind. Because, I mean, I don't know. I, I, just, I was just like, when you said boom rush, like, hmm, I want to hear what you're saying. Because you just kind of, like, glance over. I was just curious. I guess because he's rated so high and he's a rookie – I see Barkley and Penny will be studs. I think well, not not Penny. I think well Barkley's definitely going to be a stud. Penny, there's a little bit of question marks, but I think Penny will be better than Geis. Geis could be, I think potential wise, could be a top ten back. And 
I want not, the floor. I'm yeah, looking I mean, I'm, I'm curious on the floor. I feel like... Talk see, in. that's what I'm saying, though. I think it could be the 30th back if he... Really? Yeah. Okay. I feel like you have to put a low floor in any... Well, not super low, but a somewhat low floor right. in any rookie running back because they've never played a snap They're in the proven. NFL. Um, I mean, you never know. They could just be not ready to take this next step. Uh, things like that, I think, for any ro- rookie running back, you have to put... A little bit of a floor, but obviously these guys um, have the highest potential, these rookie running backs. I have another comment on both of you guys. You guys both think Ray Shaw Penny is going to be a heck of a running back in fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. I, he is untouchable for me. I think Chris Carson is going to be the starter. You guys think I mean, Chris Carson is be, the starter right that's now. That's my point. See, I, I think don't Penny think, will eventually will have the starting job. So. No, this is how I look at it. Look at the Seahawks' backfield. They have CJ Procise, Chris, Chris Carson, and JD McKissick, and him. They drafted Rayshad Penny, I think, because they didn't want him to deal with injuries. If he get, if all these guys get injured, what are we going to do? Like You don't just draft so, a guy in the first yeah. round because you want to avoid injuries. You mentioned injuries. the thing about Sony Michelle. You said the same thing. Let me finish. Him. Chris Carson is already the starter. Chris Carson's looking good in camp. I'm not taking Rayshad Penny to wait until week seven for where his ADP is. I'm not touching him in the fourth to sixth round for a guy that might not start until week four, week five, week six, week seven. I don't want to touch that guy because I think Chris Carson is a legitimate option and a legitimate, even if he doesn't start, if, what's his name? I, sorry, I lost my train of thought. If uh, Penny has a struggles two weeks in a row, I'm giving the ball to Chris Carson. Chris Carson's a good freaking running back. He broke his leg, I think, but when he got hurt. But Chris Carson, I think you guys are sleeping on. Yes, he was a seventh-round pick, but I don't think that matters when he goes no, to the yeah. league. I think Chris Carson is a guy that's absolutely being slept on. He's going to be the starter for me. And so I'm not touching Rachel Penny. I just want to get that out there because you guys act like he was nothing. Where for me, I, I'm i very worried about Chris Carson touching Rachel Penny's uh, fantasy potential. I, I don't like him as, AD, as ADP. See, I, I, I look at Sonny Michelle and Rashad Penny as the same thing. I mean, they were both taken in the first round. But the Patriots are interesting because you never know. The Seahawks, you know what you're getting. Like I feel like I know that they love Chris Carson. They made that very clear. They made that right, very clear. Right, but why take Rashad Penny in the first round then? Because they, that's what I'm saying, they're tired of injuries. I think this is a guy that had no injury injury issues with Rayshad Penny. This guy is consistent, so if you need him, he's going to get you feet. And if he beats out Chris Carson... I don't take I'm not, those kind of guys in the first round. Yeah. If you're looking for the a Seahawks guy like that... The cut their first rounder this past season. Like, I don't think the Seahawks okay. are doing like conventionally. I mean, they saw this as a need. They draft, They definitely did not draft best player available. None of us think they drafted best player available. They drafted need according to them, and their need was they needed a running back in case Chris Carson... And, I mean, because Chris Carson was a seventh-round pick. He's not a guaranteed starter. They like him right now, but Chris Carson's not a guarantee. So they have this guy in case it doesn't work out. The same thing with Sonny Michelle. I'm not sure he's going to be the starter. I'm not saying that I think Sonny Michelle's going to be good. I said interesting. He's, this is a fascinating situation. Sonny Michelle might not start for five weeks. I have no idea. No, yeah. But James like, White might be the guy that gets the carries. Okay, yeah, I'm just really high on Rashad Penny because I loved him in college. And I mean, I loved I watching him in college, for sure. I, I, that's why I like Donnell Pumphrey. I didn't like him in fantasy, but I loved watching right. him, too. Like, San Diego State running backs are awesome. Fantasy-wise, I don't think he'll be the starter week one, and so that's scary. I think eventually he will definitely be the starter. So. But eventually you're not drafting the fourth round. Fourth round is your RB2. Right. And I'm not going to take him as my RB2. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is, his ADP is fourth to sixth round. So that scares me as a flex or an RB2. I don't want him... I like him as a bench guy. He's a guy that's like, ooh, if I can get him in like the ninth, tenth round, eighth, seventh, eighth, maybe. Jeez. Okay, I'm but, not taking him as my RB two, but I'm gonna take him. Game as your flex. You'd start him to flex. I would take him as my flex spot, but maybe not, maybe not start him for week one. See, I, I I can't justify it. He is very low. Him and Michelle are lower on my rookie running back. I like Royce Freeman. I love Carryon Johnson. I love Darius Guys, and I love Saquon Barkley. They are five and six for me. For rookie running backs, and I just can't justify that. That is ADP. All right, well, let's talk about Saquon Barkley. Um, are you guys okay with taking him in the first round since he's a rookie? Yeah, so me personally, I've always had some skepticism just because I'm just a little hesitant. You don't know how they're going to adjust. But the facts don't lie. Last season, three rookie running backs finished in the top eight in standard scoring leagues. They definitely have value. I wouldn't let it sway you if he's best player available, though. I'm just not going to go reach at Saquon Barkley at 3, 4, 5. If he falls to me, he's best player available at 6 or 7, whatever his ADP is at the time. Sure, take him. I'm not mad about it. I'm not reaching for him. You look at history, though. Like I said, Zeke and Jordan Howard were top-scoring leaders, and then the year before that, it was Todd Gurley. We've had a rookie these past three years, at least one, if not more, every single year, beginning the top-scoring leader in standard leagues for running backs. 
So rookie running backs definitely have a good track record, so it doesn't scare me. Yeah, I've never taken a rookie. I have never taken a rookie running back in the first round before because I always said, I mean, you should never take someone that you know – or you shouldn't take someone that you don't know what you're getting. But I am very high on Barkley, and I think he'll have a Ezekiel Elliott-type rookie season. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a little high risk just because he's never played in the NFL before. But, I mean, the Giants didn't take him second to uh, never use him. Uh, and, I mean, I don't think there's anybody questioning how good Saquon Barkley is. I, I think he had a great college season last year. He's going to be fantastic. And, like Jason said, plenty of rookie running backs have success every year. Um, I wouldn't take him in my top five either. He's not – I wouldn't say he would have the same production as Zeke did a couple years ago. But he's still going to be very good and a later first-round pick for me. But let's get into a strategy uh, that's been – or just I want to hear your guys' running back strategy. Uh, do you like to hoard them? Uh, zero RB? What do you guys like? Yeah, I think it's easy to hoard running back because you really want to get as many shots as possible to get a stud. I personally resist the temptation. Featured workhorse backs are scarce in this league. If you have a legit workhorse back, they're definitely being dropped. They're probably being drafted in the top 20 anyways. Only eight backs had over 250 carries last year, and one had 300 carries. It was Le'Veon Bell. If this was a while ago, it'd be different. Back in the day, half the league would have had an art running back with uh, 250 carries. There was 15 in 2001. I would stay very close to 50-50 on running back and receivers to maximize value. But if you have a chance at Johnson, Gurley, Bell, Zeke, or Barkley in no particular order, snag them because they're elite. That's where I prioritize running backs is those top five guys over Antonio Brown and Julio Jones there. Once they're gone, do not get swayed with this hoarding running back strategy. I really advise people to stay away from that because there are not workhorse backs. You never really know what these running back situations are going to look like where you really do know with these wide receivers. See, I value running backs more than any other position. Um, in 2017, six running backs outscored the number one wide receiver. In 2016, eight running backs outscored the number one wide receiver. So I try to get a tier one running back before I get a top receiver. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going best value. Whoever um, I think has the best potential to have a solid season. I mean, zero running back only works in certain situations. And if you have a top four pick, don't even think about drafting a wide receiver, you've got to get one of the stud running backs uh, because, I forget, one of you said it, um, work, workhorse backs are hard to find, and those four are the most surefire uh, guys to get the lion's share of their team's carries. Uh, I mean, I would not get try to get cute and reach for uh, OBJ, Julio, Hopkins, um, no matter how much you like them. I wouldn't do that until... Uh, um, those first four guys, and then give me Johnson, Kamara, uh, or Kamara Barkley, then I would look at uh, those receivers. But Yeah, I yeah. mean, we disagree on rankings, but that's fine. We'll get into that later. But I think we agree on the same side. It's sort of principle. I just want to say, for listeners, if you are listening to this, stay away from the temptation to grab LaShawn McCoy before you draft, like, OBJ or AJ Green or Michael Thomas. Like, don't be that guy that drafts a running back just because you don't have one yet and you need one in that first round. like The difference between Sean McCoy and Dalvin Cook or Leonard Fournette and all those different guys that are all around the same is not that big. If there is a good receiver available, do not fall temptation to the hoarders that just try to get as many shots at running backs. And even when you go deeper, you look at guys that try, like people are trying to get Kenyon Drake. You have no idea if it's going to be him or Frank Gore. But then there's guys around that same time with Michael Crabtree, Corey Davis, who are legit number ones who you can track. They're going to get the most targets. So that's t- like you just have to be smart with value, and it's just really going to come down to individual people. How do you value those guys? Dylan and I clearly dis- disagree on value, but we agree with the same strategy. Take the best value, do not get cute, and go with a certain position because it's not the right way to handle it. That's my only, that's my only really big thing. All right. Um... Well, let's get into our top 10 rankings. Um, so, who wants to go first? Should we go... Let's go 10 to 1. Okay. Yeah. Like, we all say number 10, we all say number 9. That kind okay. of stuff. Yeah. All right. I'll go number 10. I have Dalvin Cook. Uh, 
this, so I want to make this clear before, I do my, every year I do my top 200 rankings, and then I do my tiers, so these are the elite and high-end RB1s for me. From 10 to 1, these are the high-end running back ones. Number 11 and below is where the running back twos begin. For me personally, Dalvin Cook, for me, comes in at number 10. Um, I have Leonard Fournette at number 10. Uh, he had a great rookie year, and I think he should progress more into his second year. Yeah, I also have Cook at number 10. I actually think there's three different tiers inside of uh, this top 10, and I'll talk about that at the end once uh, uh, we finish. Uh, but Jason, go ahead for number nine. Yeah, so for me, I go with Melvin Gordon. I think this is still that high-end RB1, like I said. Until I get to David Johnson, all these guys are high-end RB1s. I have Alvin Kamara at number nine. Um, he could improve because of English suspension, and we kind of already talked about that. So, Yeah, I have Kareem Hunt at number nine. I think he takes a bit of a step back this season, I, I think. After those first few games, I think he was mediocre the rest of the season. So, But he's still going to get most of the carries for the Chiefs, so that's why I have him at number nine. That surprises me. I have Kareem Hunt a lot higher. Uh, number eight for me, Leonard Fournette. Dan, you have him at number 10. I have him at number eight. I like what the Jags are doing this year. I think he's going to be a heck of a player. I have Dalvin Cook at number eight. Uh, he was on his way to being a top back last year until the injury uh, the only question for me is the injury, but I'm going to take the risk with the upside. All right. I also have Leonard Fournette, like Jason, at number eight. Uh, Jason, go ahead for number seven. Seven's Alvin Kamara. We already talked about this a lot. I'm not as high as him, but I do think he's RB7 and worth the late first round, early second round pick. I have Melvin Gordon at number seven. Uh, he's a very safe pick, was a top five fantasy back last year. So, Dan, let me make sure. We have the same four guys, right, with Cook, Gordon, Fournette, Kamara, just in different order? I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, crap, I think I only rank nine. So I'm saying this uh, a <laughs> step ahead. So I had I have Leonard Fournette. Who do you have at 11, then? At like 11? Shady, like, cause since you, you thought you ranked 10, but you ranked nine. Right. Who's number 10, then? Is like Who's number 10? Probably yeah. Kareem Hunt. Oh, you didn't have a cream. I don't have cream. I have okay. So I have Leonard Fournette at nine, Alvin Kamara at eight, Dalvin Cook at seven, Melvin Gordon at six. So you don't have cream pie in your top. Oh, you have him at number ten. I have him at number ten. Ooh, okay, yeah. never mind. I have Melvin Gordon at number seven, and that's actually the end of my uh, third tier of running backs. It'll make sense uh, more when we get done, and I'll explain my three. You can tiers. explain it now if you want the third tier. Uh, well, I'll, I'll get done first, and then uh, so you can hear all the running backs at once. All right, uh, for me, Kareem Hunt's number six. I think you guys are both sleeping on him. This is a perfect situation for Kareem Hunt. You've got a quarterback that wants to be super gun-shy and just go at it, or super not gun-shy and just go at it. But the realistic thing is they're not going to be able to do that with a rookie quarterback. Patrick Mahomes is not going to be throwing the ball 45 times. Kareem Hunt is in a perfect situation to get these balls, catch out of the backfield. I love Kareem Hunt this year, and I am definitely taking him over Alvin Kamara. All right, well, I already said my number six in Melvin Gordon. So. Right. I have <laughs> yeah. I have Saquon Barkley at number six, um, the rookie running back from the Giants. We talked about him earlier. For number five, this is where my elite RB1s are going to start. It is Saquon Barkley. He's elite slash high end. I really can't decide I because I do yeah. it by colors. Mm-hmm. I have his first name in purple, his second name in blue, because I can't decide. I think he's going to be elite. I don't know. I just I do I don't think you can question his upside. And for me, I mm-hmm. like him. So I'm I like his where he's at. I like him at six or seven. Like I said, don't reach for him, but where he's at, take him. Yeah, my five through one is elite. Uh, so I have Barkley at five. I'm extremely high on him, and I'm going to take him in the first round if I have the right pick. I have Alvin Kamara at my number five again. We talked Ooh. about him earlier, um, but let's get into our top four. I think we all have. Um, Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, Ezekiel Elliott, and David Johnson in some order. But Jason, I'll let you go for number four. four. Yes. Those are my four. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'll just go four through one since we all know who it is. I have David Johnson four, Todd Gurley three, Zeke two, and Le'Veon one. All four of those guys are high-end, elite, all of those words, number ones. Get them if you can. Don't pass on them. Yeah, I have David Johnson at four. He's the last of my tier one. Um, but he shouldn't be in front of the guys I just mentioned because of the injury. 
Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, I have at three. Um, he was second in points per game in standard leagues last year. Todd Gurley, I have at two. He led all backs in standard and PPR leagues last year. And then Le'Veon Bell at one. I have that same order, Dan, except for Gurley and Bell are switched. I like Todd Gurley as Ooh. my number Why is that? one back. Um, I'm at three. I mean, Le'Veon Bell is getting older. He's had more injury concerns. Uh, and, I mean, he's not even showing up at camp yet. So, uh, didn't it take him a little bit last season to really get into things? I believe. I believe he had a slow I mean, he still finishes a yeah. heck of an elite RB1. Yeah, I, don't care where, I don't care how the game the season starts. Well, I, I mean, I, uh, for me, I am all in on Le'Veon Bell because... I mean, it might be stupid. You guys might say like it doesn't mean anything, but did you guys? He's tweeted three different times. This twenty eighteen season is going to be his best. Watch out! Like he's very confident on this last season. I'm all in on that. I even I actually have talked really three because of how much I love Zeke Elliott. I think that dude's mm-hmm. going to have a heck of a season. I think he could be the RB one if Le'Veon is for some reason hurt or whatever. I love Bell and Elliott. If I had to make another tier of like elite elite, it'd be Bell and Elliott. But I mean, you can't go wrong with those four. So Dylan, you're taking Gurley with your first overall pick. Yeah. Dan's taking research, because in our one of our leagues, Dan is the fourth pick, Dylan has the third, so might be good intel to have for True. Dan. Yeah. Uh, I would be extremely happy if I got Gurley or Bell at number three. I don't think that'll happen, but... I was just saying in general, because they're picking back yeah. and back. I, I don't know. I just can't... I would never pick Todd Gurley at one, but also you can't go wrong, so I mean, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, so let me explain my three tiers inside the top ten uh, for my running backs now. Uh... Gurley, Bell, Zeke, and David Johnson are all in my top four. I think those guys are pretty close. Um, and then Kamara and Barkley uh, in between. I like them about the same. And then Melvin Gordon, Leonard Fournette, uh, Kareem Hunt, and Dalvin Cook. All those guys are, again, pretty similar to me. And that rounds out my top ten. Yeah. But that's all we've got for today's Fantasy Running Backs podcast. If you want to check out our wide receiver podcast. That'll also be up at the same time. We did quarterbacks about a week ago, so make sure you go ahead and check that one out too. And if you want to learn, uh, if you want to study up for this year's NFL season, uh, we have a bunch of podcasts already done for that. Team previews for every individual team. Go ahead and check those out. Uh, and in the intro, Jason mentioned a contest for Scooch. Uh, make sure you comment and subscribe to our channel to be entered into a contest to win a Scooch Wingman case, the most functional case on the market. That's all, that's all we've got for today, and we will see you soon with some more Fantasy Football Podcasts.